I'm going to calculate the integral from 0 to half pi sine x dx without using antiderivative, without using a Newton Leibniz rule. First, let's uh, prove this formula first. So we all know that complex number e to the power of i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i times sine theta. So therefore, uh, if I just sum them up, k okay, from 1 to n of e to the, for example, i k x, right? So e to i x plus e to 2 i x plus e to 3 i x all the way. And that is equal to the real part. k okay, goes from uh, 1 to n of cosine kx plus i times the imaginary part sum k goes from 1 to n of sine of kx right this sum so at the same time this is actually a geometric series right the common ratio is e to the uh, ix right? so according to the formula at the bottom we have 1 minus e to the ix top we have uh, e to the ix times 1 minus e to the i times nx. Right. So now what do we do? Right. Now we just factor out the factor out the bottom, we factor out e to the e to the half of ix. Right. Then we're left with uh, e to the minus half of ix minus e to the half of ix right this is no problem right it's still the same thing and e to the ix 1 minus e to the inx So this time, this time the e to the, first of all, let me just simplify this and that. So that is equal to e to the, this time, half ix, right? 1 minus e to the i nx. At the bottom, the bottom I have cosine cosine negative, negative, but cosine is an even function, so cosine half of ix, uh, half x. And I have plus, plus i sine, negative, but sine is odd, so I just distribute negative out, minus sine half x, right? And I have minus, and I'm going to rewrite this into uh, trigonometry. So, <laughs> cosine half x minus i sine half x, right, this time. So, cosine, cosine gone, right? And negative twice of i sine half x. So this time we just multiply top and half by i, cancel out this i. Okay. So negative 2i times i becomes negative 2i squared. i squared is negative, 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 positive. So twice of sine half x at the bottom. Okay. Multiply i to the top. I, and uh, this can be written into trigonometry form, right? So this is actually uh, cosine half x plus I sine half x. And I'm not done. Still have uh, this multiplied by that, multiplied by I. Right? I now have negative sign coming up. I, so 
this times that, the power add up and written into trigonometry form. So power this time becomes n plus i times n x plus half x. So written into a trigonometry form. I should have cosine. The angle would be, I believe it's n plus half quantity x. Right? N plus i sine n plus half x. All right, so this time I just uh, separate the real part and the imaginary part. Right. So equal twice sine half x and uh, real part, what's the real part? Uh, I times I negative sine half x and I, I, negative I squared, positive, positive sine n plus half x. Imaginary part is I bracket cosine half x. And this part, right, neg minus cosine. Minus cosine n plus half x. This is my imaginary part. So, uh, real part, imaginary part, right? Corresponding, correspondingly. So this should equal to that over this, right? So, really, sine kx at the map is equal to this part, right? Equal to this over that. Now if I divide 0 to half pi, 0 to half pi, partition it into n equal parts, right? so that every small interval, the width will be pi over 2n. And so that the, this is sine sine x graph. So e each interval, I evaluate the function at, for example, at the right edge of each small interval. Right. So function value becomes sine of k pi over 2n. k goes from 1, 2, all the way to n. <laughs> Right, for example, this functional value at here is some k sine k pi over 2n. Right, k goes from 1, 2, 3 all the way to, to n. Right. So I'm going to use Riemann sum to calculate this, in, this definite integral. So Riemann sum. Riemann sum. Sum multiplied by the width of the interval, pi over 2n, right, then sum, k goes from 1 to n, the functional value, sum of k pi over 2n. Right? Later we let n approach infinity, calculate the limit. But right now, I'm going to use the formula I've just proven, right? that is sine kx. Okay, so we can treat we, we can treat x as pi over 2n right, x. so therefore this is equal to pi over 2n right, according to the formula right, twice of sine half x twice of sine half x pi over 4n this time, and cosine half x, cosine half x, pi over 4n minus cosine n plus half. 
times x. x is this one, right? Pi over 2n. I calculate the limit of this as n approaches infinity. And first of all, first of all, I know sine x over x, a well-known limit, approaches 1 as x approaches 0. So therefore, sine of uh, pi over 4n over pi over, over 4n, I'm going to treat x as uh, pi over 4n, n approaches infinity, so we'll also approach 1, right? So I just divide it by pi over 4n at the same time, multiply by pi over 4n, right? So this approaches 1 in the end, right? But I'm not done. Right now, on the denominator, I have 2 times pi over 4n, right? So maybe I just flip, flip this pi over 4n, right? Because since now it's on the denominator, I just flip, flip. So 4n over pi. Four n over pi. Right, it's still the same thing. Right now, pi pi. Right, two n four n two. But two is on the bottom again. There is two on the denominator. Two n two. Right. So now what do I have? I have this right. But remember. Cosine pi over 4n approach cosine 0. Cosine 0 approaches just 1. I saw this. This approach 1. Right. So cosine this part. Right, cosine this part becomes cosine this distribute onto that pi over 2. Right? And uh, plus pi over 4n. Right? So this whole thing approaches cosine half pi. Right? Approaches uh, 0. Right? So in the end, the whole thing approaches just 1. Right, this this is gone. But this in fact turning to one, and this approaches one one. This is gone. This gone. Right, the whole thing. This this whole thing, together with this thing. This thing approaches one. So in the end, approaches one. So really, indeed, we know that uh, from using the Newton Leibniz. This is really really one.